Alright, I'm just taking another little video. I got the dog out here with me. He's chilling. He's not liking it that much. But I'm about to I'm about to do the um EGR delete on this right now. So I started taking it apart yesterday. Um I got the battery out, I got the um the air box out and a couple of things. I'm gonna take this whole EGR cooler out right here. I'm about to pull the computer out and the bracket so it's out of the way. Move the um the air conditioning fill tube right there. I'm gonna move that up a little bit out of the way. And then I can unbolt this EGR cooler, take the pipes off and get that right out of there. Then I can put the blocks on and everything like that and I'll bring you back to it here in a minute. And if you wanna watch the full video, you can go on YouTube and watch the full video. I'm just doing little clips here. Not my buddy's bar and shop where I'm working on the truck. I'm just about to get started on this. I just forgot to do a little clip. If you want to watch the whole video, go to DW's Customs on YouTube. I'll, do, I'll post the whole video there of doing the delete. So if anybody wants to watch it, go over to DW's Customs on YouTube. And I also have DW's uh, Customs on TikTok as well. But it's pretty much the same videos. But go ahead and uh, follow on that channel as well. Thank you, guys. Right, these are the bolts that, that are so hard to get out. Is these ones right here. They always, when people take them out, they usually break. People spray them for days and everything like that. All I do is set the extension on them like that and then I hit the extension with a hammer a couple times and I try to spin them out just one second now let's see if they come out or if it breaks because that's what they do is they break or come out one or the other it turned a little bit turn it back a little here Turn it back a little. If they break off, it's hard to get the plate over it. You gotta have them so they come out, so they you can get the plate. That one came out. These are the ones that everybody has a problem. When I'm at home, I just take it off with my little impact, and it's no problem. But here, I don't have. Oh, that one broke. All right, I'm gonna have to weld that one to get it out. All right, I got the EGR cooler out of there. I did break them two bolts off right there, which they were coming out, and then they broke. So I'm gonna just weld the nuts on them and get them out, and heat them up and get them out. It's no problem. I've had to get them out before when other people broke them off, so. It's actually the first set that I broke off, but they come out easy, so it's no problem. But yeah, that's look how much more room there is on that motor once you take that out of there. You can actually see the motor. And this design is sick too because the six sevens Ford motors, the manifolds are on the inside, so there's no up pipes or nothing. The turbo bolts right to the actual manifolds. This is one manifold here, and the other one's on the other side. Then when you shut these trucks off, you don't have to wait for the turbos to cool and stuff because all the heat holds in here, so it cools slowly. It's this is actually a badass design. I don't care what kind of fan you are Dodge Ford Chevy These are the best motors out right now The 6.7s they make the most power. They're the most reliable. I got one at home with 600,000 on it I got one with 365,000 and I got one with 50 or actually 42,000 and No problems with any of them. They're all amazing. I did a water pump on one and um, And I deleted them and everything but that's it That's how I fix it right there. You can see I welded a nut on that one right there if I'll get out of the light here, see? Now I weld the nut on there and I got it turning back and forth. So it's, I'm gonna get that one out and then I'll weld the nut on the other one. Before I weld the nut on, I build a little weld pile on top of the uh, old bolt that's broke off. That way I don't have to try to weld. You know, if you get too much stuff down along next to it in here and everything, it'll it'll hold it up. So I weld, I hit it a couple times, zzz, 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 bring it out so it's above the surface and I throw the nut on there and weld it. But I'll bring it back as soon as I get that nut. It's hard to video and work at the same time, but these bolts, once you weld it on there, it's really easy to go too far with it. So you gotta be really careful. Like when you turn it, you just put it on there, turn it a little bit. Once it starts to stop, you don't force it because it will they will break right back off. So see it stopped right there. So I'll turn it back and I'll go back in. I'll do it 10, 15 times if I have to, just to make sure it don't break off again because that's what happened the first time when it did break. I had it turning. But it got to a point where it felt like it would pass, but it won it and it didn't. So right there it is again. It feels like it could pass, but I don't think it's gonna because it hasn't yet. So I broke off one nut doing this. I put uh, welded the first one on, turned it a few times, and it broke right back up. The nut came off. It's hard to get them welded on there really perfect, but this one's welded on there really pretty good, pretty damn good. He's only welded onto a five sixteenths or whatever, a quarter inch bolt, you know. See, she stopped right there again. But you can see she's up a little bit. So when you got it in the out position, you can hit it with some PV to try to get it underneath there to get it to, you know, just makes it a little easier to go in and out. But um, there she is. Now I'm gonna turn it back down in. 
And if I was at home, I would probably just hit it with my electric wrench and it would probably go right past it, but with a little, it probably wouldn't even broke it to begin with if I was at home, to be honest, because of the impact. But now it's now I know it's coming past it. So now I can just turn it, continuously turn it out until it gets almost out. And then I'll stop and do it with my hands out and drop it down in the manifold or some stupid shit. Because it happens. <laughs> I mean, people do it. I try not to, but hey, hey, anything's possible. See, now she's coming out there nice and good. She's almost out. Look how long that freaking thing is, too. See, I stop right there so I don't drop it in. Grab a hold of it, even though it's a little warm. I'll grab the nut. Pull it out. There it is, right there. You see, it just looks like a regular bolt now. But... Got it out, the hole's nice and clean. Now we can put another bolt back in there, no problem. No drilling, no messing around. But I'll bring you back on the next one. All right, I'm back. I just, this one, the second one took a little bit longer to get out, but nonetheless, I got it. And I didn't mess up either of the holes. That you guys see me get that one out. This one, I had to weld a few different nuts on it to get it out, but I got it without hurting the threads. Like this one was broke off down in a little bit, but there it is. I always weld like a little nut because see, if the weld touches the edge, which you can see a little bit, the weld touches the edge of the manifold a little, or right here a little bit. It'll, if you, if your weld ain't just clean on the nut, I mean, just clean on the bolt, it'll be harder because it'll be kind of grinded on this when you're trying to take it out. But either way, I got it out and it, the threads are nice and clean and perfect. So there it is. And I'm about to put it back together. Then when I start, I'm going to put this all back together. Then when I uh, pick the truck up and do the, um, the converter and the def filter, then I'll bring you back and let you see what it sounds like. I got to put a, um, cold air intake on it as well and put the um, mini max on there mini max pro on there but i'll bring you back for that. these are the um these all go over top of the holes that are left open now and then there's a hose that and filter you know there's a hose there's clamps there's bolts to put this stuff back on this uh continues the water line that used to go into there it just like kind of uh, blocks it off i mean don't block it off it just reroutes it there's a water line here got to pretty much go to that water line but um Oh, no, no, it goes to this one. My bad. This one here goes over to this one with that T or with that piece. That's how you do that. Then these blocks go over blocks here, blocks here, and blocks down there. That one I just took off. The one that goes down there is a temperature one for the pyrometer for the exhaust temp. So I got to take that exhaust sensor out of there, put it in here. That goes there. So I'm going to do that and I'll bring you back. All right, I got all that done. All the brackets are in, the temp sensor's in there, the block costs are all there. I'm about to put the cold air intake in here. I got the computer all, like I'm pretty much all done with the top. I just gotta put the cold air intake in. And then I'm gonna put pick it up and do the filter and the um the Kelly converter. So and then I'll start it up and let you check it out. But there it is. <laughs> 2015 Ford F350. Oh, actually it's a 250, six seven power stroke. Sweet truck though. Here's the Mini Max that's going in it. I love these. I've used them on a lot of trucks. I know. I don't know. Some people say there's better ones, but I've used three of these, and I love every single one of them. They're easy to install. They work perfectly. No problem. It takes minutes to do it. So there's that. And then this is the this is the um, cold air intake. I believe I haven't opened it yet, but but I believe this is the cold air intake. Let's see what's in there. <clears throat> I just told him what to order, and he ordered it while well, I was still in New York. He was in Texas. Move it. Yeah, it's a little bit different than the one that I had, but it's a sweet one, though. That was got the box and everything that goes inside there. And then the filter, all the hoses. There's a filter. The filter must be inside there. Yeah, the filter's right in there. And I think it has a plastic sight glass that goes over top of it. Yeah, right there. So that goes in there like that. With a filter in it, it plugs in just like in the regular, like the regular filter did. And then there's a clear sight glass that goes over it. You can see the filter. It's right here, but I'll open it up and then show you. But there it is. This is the mass airflow sensor. This is where it goes into the new, uh, it goes just like that. It sits in the truck like that. So this goes into here like this. That's where the new one goes. It only goes one way, so it fits like that right there. Perfect. That's the new, that's what goes into the new tube for the new cold air intake. And these thread in right here, just like they did on the other one. And then up a little equally. 
away so it won't get crazy. Then this goes up in here like this with the rubber things on it goes like that and then the mass airflow sensor plugs right in like see this goes in here like this and like this on both sides oh, i got this thing all fucked up mass airflow sensor this goes here that goes in there the filter goes on there and the mass airflow sensor plugs in right there put this all together and i'll bring you back when it's jump the gun a little bit on the mass airflow sensor there's a little thing that goes in between it it's like a um, little pad so that it's not like sitting metal to metal Right here, it's got a gasket and a like a spacer. So, gasket will probably go here. I'm assuming. Yep. And this sits flush on here because this already has an O-ring on it. You know what I'm saying? This one already has an O-ring on it, so it sits like that. It only goes one way, but it goes like that. So this one has a rubber seal on it. It seals right in there. It seals to that clip. Then that gasket there seals that one. So it goes like this. Yeah, that fits much better, a lot more comfortable and smooth. But yeah, as soon as I got started getting the rest of the stuff out of there, I noticed it immediately. But if, if you ever do, I mean, that would have worked fine like it was, but that's not the way, you know, that's not the way it's supposed to be. So do everything the right way, then you don't have to worry about having problems in the future. It could have leaked a little bit of air. Maybe not got a perfect reading on the mass airflow sensor, so just do stuff right, then you have the least amount of problems. And nobody can say you didn't do it perfect if you did do it perfect, so that's looking good like that. It fits way better. Let's see, get that one in the rest of the way. Perfect. Now it's nice and good and smooth, comfortable. See, that's how it's supposed to be right there. So, all right. Now I got this here. This, this round piece here goes on here like this. Yes. It's hard to do it and literally hold the camera at the same time, but it goes like that. And then there's got these one on there, one on the outside. But I'll bring you back after I get this on. How does that looks like in? Sweet. Glass. It's plexiglass, it's on a rubber. This thing, it's hard to get in there to grommet. So there's a grommet down in there that blocks air. So you can, really this is only sucking air from where the regular, the factory one's sucking air. So it's a solid unit. I think I might buy one of these for my truck, to be honest. It's a solid unit. It goes together really nice. Like all the clamps are good, the rubbers are good. Like it's solid in there, it bolts in nice. So there it is. So I'm gonna do the DPF filter and the um, converter and put the new pipe in there and then i'll bring you guys back and start this thing up and get the tuner on it see how she sounds all right i got everything done under the hood oh i'm gonna put a couple zip ties on them wires that's it but i'll do that next but the cold air intake the e the um egr is completely deleted every you know all the hoses are hooked back up i had to put a couple of connectors in to get rid of some other lines that line goes there everything is good all i'm gonna do is put these wires here they don't hook to anything i'm going to zip tie these up out of the way and do it and same with this with this vacuum we'll zip tie these like this so they're just clean looking and that's it and then i'll show you underneath here in a second okay now it's actually done <laughs> see i got the zip them up and make them look nice halfway decent batteries are back in cold air intakes on all the delete is done up here now i'm going to put it up on the lift and do the bottom so here we go man i got this truck all done i just have to uh Everything's done on it right now, but um, I'm waiting for my wife to upload the tune onto the chip. But you can see everything's all new. Got that completely deleted. I'll start it right now, even though it's in lint mode, just so you can hear what it sounds like. Just a second. There's the old got that converter and DPF. DPF. But you can hear the truck sounds completely different right now. That sounds good. This is just with the That's just with the EGR. I mean that's just with the depth filter and the converter off and everything right now. But um the truck is in uh reduced power mode right now because I the mini max that I got for it, I have to update it on the computer, which I'm I'm about to do that right now. Then one, after I do that I'll pop it in and then 
You can hear it with a tune on it. But right now that's what it is. You see it's that, it's that, uh, I got the 2015 6.7 Power Stroke F250 all done. So there's the new pull their intake, the EGR deletes all, all done. Everything's out and everything works perfectly. Then I put the pipe in down here to take place to get the converter and everything. All brand new. And then this is what it sounds like just at idle right now. I'm doing the. I just figured I'd bring back after. If you want to watch the full video, I'm putting the full video on YouTube, the whole delete. So, DPF and EGR delete, 6.7 power stroke with Minimax. 